This is one minute of me ordering a pizza from Little Caesars. Yeah, I'll take a pepperoni and a cheese. Alrighty. So one pepperoni and one cheese, or both are they used? Or both pepperoni and cheese? One, one pepperoni, one, one cheese, cheese. Okay. yeah. And then did you want to do them classics or extra plus bestest? Uh, classics, whatever's easiest. Alrighty. So I want to say it's going to be about 12 to 15 minutes right now. Okay. Alrighty, so classic pepperoni and a classic cheese, your total is going to be 1078. Go ahead and enter. There's a wait for just the cheese top. Hey everybody, you're listening to Inspirato Projecto. Welcome to another day filled with possibilities. Another day of, another day, one in a, a multitude of days happening right now, parallel to this day. Because as you well know, there are parallel universes going on. Going on. Every decision we make splits into a new parallel universe. So that all those possibilities basically out there in the world, they all exist. They all exist. Every single possibility already exists. And when we choose, we're just pulling one piece of a possibility out of all those Choices. That's why time travel is such a strange conundrum. Because there's no guarantee you'll end up on your own. How do you know which timeline you're going to end up on? How do you know that you're going to end up on, on the timeline that you, well, I guess that you prefer or that you're used to or that you're comfortable with or that you have a history with that you want to hold tight on to? What if that little girl in, in um, uh, elementary school that you, that you just cherished so deeply, what if you two actually did? What if you two had ended up getting married? And now you're not living in Nebraska. You're now living in Florida, something like that. Right? So what happens if you time travel and now you go to that, you actually dump, dump into that, that parallel universe where <laughs> you're not, everything that you know is not there anymore. It's, it's gone, which means that that whole history is gone. Because all those little series of steps, doop, 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 they brought you here. So, I want to ask you, uh, have you ever been rewarded in a very pleasant way, exciting way, joyful way. Have you ever been rewarded for dreaming big, for dreaming huge, for dreaming seemingly absurdly gigantic, out of your brain <laughs> uh, dreams, imagination, and then all of a sudden then it, then it comes into your life? Have you been rewarded for dreaming big? Another question, this may be obvious, have you faced adversity from those who tried to, let's just say manicure, <laughs> manicure and limit and landscape your, your dream? They limit it. Um, this... is a huge reflection of what that person is willing to dream, how big they allow themselves to go, how much disappointment they've faced in their lives where they, they wanted something bad and it didn't happen. Uh, and so they, it might be out of 
yeah, it might be out of ego. Sure, there might be that aspect, that competitive aspect. Like, oh, how dare, how dare his dreams come true? No, 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 no. Uh, that, that's crazy. That guy is, uh, is just dreaming too big right now. That guy's dreaming too big. We, we, we got to cut it down. We got to cut it down so he's, he doesn't get those crazy thoughts in his head. Uh, uh, let's see. What kind of monkey wrenches can we throw into this program? Let's see. Let's see. Um, there's also that aspect that perhaps that person is your friend, your family member, coworker, whatever, whatever. And maybe they, they are one of those compassionate folks who just don't want you, you know, they, from their point of view, they're thinking that they're sparing your feelings. They're, um, trying to stop you from getting hurt by limiting the scope of that imagination. They're trying to spare your feelings. So we better do it now. We better crush your dream right now and get it over with before... You know, too much time passes and and it gets too much momentum and you get too excited about it. We better just crush that right now. Squash it right now. However, I do believe I'm rewarded more. (laughs) I'm rewarded far more for dreaming big, humongous, ridiculous, if it's if it's if the dream is ridiculous, you're going in the right direction. <laughs> Let's just put it that way. If the dream is ridiculously seemingly out of your reach, that's more of the direction you go in. Or I like to go in. I'm not the, you know, I'm not going to tell you what to do. That's the direction I like to go in. Uh the more absurd, the more outlandish I'm going to see what I can conjure up. <laughs> Let's see what we can do. I'm going to do that. Uh, because if all of these infinite possibilities exist out there in the world, uh, and infinity is just too huge, too huge to put a puny human, as the Hulk might say, puny human smash. Uh, the, the limitless universe, the infinitum, the infinitums within the infinitums, <laughs> the, the infinitums giving birth to other infinitums, uh, that, that is just far too huge for this puny human brain to try to comprehend. Well, but Kurt, science, uh, 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 science, uh, microscopes and telescopes, uh, we, we, we only know, we only know the data, what the scientists gave us, uh, that, that's it, uh, uh, they're, you know, they're the official word, Kurt, come on, they got all the answers, hold your horses on that dream and stuff, okay, hold your horses on that dream, d- uh, dream and stuff, until... Science says it's okay, okay, until the official word comes through all of my favorite news sources and all my most listened to media. Just wait until it, until, uh, 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 it comes screaming through those news outlets. Then I'll put my stamp of, of approval on your dreams. Until then, uh, 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 ain't happening. Just ain't happening. Right? God, that's gross. It feels gross to say it. it feels gross, grosser to even hear it. Blech. 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 Let's get rid of that spirit right now. Ugh. Get rid of that spirit. Ugh. Shaking, shaking and quaking. Shaking and quaking. Get rid of that spirit. Yikes. Ugh. Yikes. Imagine carrying around that every day, every moment of your life. Limits, 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 limits. Oh, what a beautiful day. Um, well, it might rain, though. No. Limits, 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 limits. Wow, I can see the sun outside. Well, the clouds might come by soon. Limits, 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 limits. So, the key to this that we always hear about from all these phenomenal... From all these phenomenal 
spiritual gurus, shaman. These, these are my scientists. Actually, you are a scientist. I'll put it right. I'll put it straight to you. You're a scientist. Did you know that? Did you, did you know that? I'm a scientist. Did you know that? How am I a scientist? Well, what is science? You come up with a hypothesis. You test it out with what, whatever, in, whatever instruments you got. Did the Mayans have telescopes? I wouldn't doubt it. <laughs> but let's just say just for kicks, they didn't. Those Mayans knew what the hell they were talking about. Now, didn't they? And it baffles us. Why? Because we're confronted with the idea of us having these finely tuned instruments, all this stuff that we got. We're the big dogs. How could, how could it be possible without these instruments for some primitive culture living out there in nature? How, how is it possible for them to know these things? Well, they had a deeper connection to uh, nature, animals, Uh, just the universe as a whole, much deeper connection that many of us could ever comprehend. And that's not to put any of us down at all. It's to say that we're filled with distractions. They didn't have their cell phones. They didn't have their televisions. They didn't have their... The sky was their television. The fire was their television. The ocean was their television. The branches waving in the wind was their television. The owl landing on that branch. The hummingbird flittering in front of their eyes that was their television and those were their messengers those are their messengers those are our messengers those are our messengers so science what is it you have a hypothesis and you test it out and you find that it works that's science sometimes it takes a long time thomas edison bam he had ideas. I'm sure everyone's telling him, you can't do that. That's wrong. That's wrong. Nikola Tesla. <sighs> years and years and years and years and years and years later, we're uncovering all of this extraordinary stuff Nikola Tesla did that he wanted to do that he was squashed up by those companies. Say, no, how dare you? That's going to mess with my... That's going to... Oh, that's going to mess with my greedy brain. That's going to mess with my... My finances, how dare you make free energy? So just rest, rest a seward. You, you are in fact a, a scientist. Quantum mechanics, it's making its way out there more and more and more and more. More and more and more and more. And the louder it gets, the more you're gonna hear people going, oh, that's quackery, oh, that's quackery. The same people who rely on scientists' instruments to tell them, to give them direction in, into what, what to put their stamp of approval on. Oh, Pluto is no longer a planet? Oh, I say that then too. Science says no, I say no. So those who trust the same scientists who have the, the instruments that say all that stuff, for some reason don't trust the scientists who have <laughs> uh, instruments that can show... <laughs> show how uh, uh, protons, neutrons, neutrons, electrons, bloop, 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 blipping in, blipping out, blipping in, blipping in, out, wavicles, bloop, 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 blipping in and out of uh, existence. Large Hadron Collider. They built a humongous machine just so they can smash two little tiny... How do you... How do you... How do you even direct those things in a certain direction? What do you use to blast those things? And you smash them at each other? And it creates black holes? How astounding is that? So if everything at all times is blinking in and out of existence, I mean, then how can we even actually truly at any point, if we think about it, rely on any sort of thought? There it is, there it is, there it's gone, and there it is. Was it even our was it even my thought in the first place, or was it did it come through Did a guy in China have that thought? And then blip, and then he and then he's like, no, I don't want that thought anymore. And then the thought's like, okay, come on over here. This stuff just astounds me. So in this world of limitless possibilities, what is the harm in dreaming huge? 
Imagine opening your arms. I'm gonna do it right now. I'm opening my arms to the sky. Like a Y. It's like a Y, okay? Like a slingshot. Why not dream big, right? Why not dream big? Better question, why dream big? Why dream big? Look at this. The hands reaching towards all that is. It's also like a hug. I'm hugging this information. What is it also? It's like a filter. It's like one of those, like a, like an oil, oil, um, not filter, oil, um, you know what I'm talking about. When you pour the oil into your car, it's got like that V. It's like a, it's like a, it's like a, it's like a spout thing. It's, so you don't get the oil all over the place. It's angled like that. Di, diangled. Diangled, diagonal. Hold your arms up there. Oh! I am willing for the infinite possibilities to filter into me through the beacons that I have put out there, through the magnetization that I'm activating. I'm willing to let all that is, all the unseen, all the seen, because everything that's seen was once unseen until someone manifested it into existence. So, inviting in all these infinite possibilities. What are those infinite possibilities that we might want to invite in? The good idea would be inviting in the possibilities that closely uh, reflect our highest joys and passions. That's, that's for sure. So the key to this, as many, many have stated, or... I'll just I'll just speak on about those uh, gurus, shaman, teachers that I've read, listened to, applied their knowledge of. These are folks who, by the way, the information I get. These these are folks who are dealing with other dimensions. Who am I going to trust the word of more? Those who are dealing with other dimensions directly directly putting them themselves through this experience the lewis and clarks of 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 of, of multi-dimensional travel so to speak who am i going to listen to them or some grumpy etc etc i want to listen to those who are exploring who are discovering we're excited to share this information, this helpful information, this applicable information. And when you start hearing similar information from different sources, <clears throat> and knowing that those particular sources got that information through different ways, through their own particular scientific methods, you start seeing the Venn diagram of that, they start matching up and you're going, okay, okay. Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. Mm-hmm. That makes sense. It makes more and more sense. <laughs> and how could it not? It's got the word sense in it. it. Makes more and more sense when our senses are tuned into those particular sensations. The sense. The sense. Sensors, the feelers, the um, so apply. So applying, it makes sense. The more you apply it, because then you get to sense it yourself. So when I listen to these folks, like Dolores Cannon and all of the past life regression stuff that she did, Bashar, uh, Daryl Anka who channels Bashar, uh, we got uh, Esther Hicks who channels Abraham, we got Neville Goddard. His voice coming through the radio. We got uh, whose guy recently started learning more about Edgar Casey. He he was one of the first guys to talk about who, who actually went into trances and would tell people about their past lives, diagnose them. These are all things to be paid attention to, not to be scoffed at. Not not like one of those late night news things like.
I just realized that I had an alarm set today. And uh, when the alarm went off, it was one of those snooze things. I snoozed it. And I noticed on Anchor, this is something I gotta send an email to these guys about. When you're on a roll, and you're excited about what you're talking about, I don't even know what exactly came through on a thing that I just did, because I'm not listening to it. So, I don't know where I left off. But a reminder, an alarm popped through. Martha's place, where she's going to interview me. She's going to interview me today, 12 o'clock Pacific Standard Time. I set an alarm to remind myself. I snoozed it when I saw it. And then when I started the podcast, it popped up. And then it prompt, promptly shut me off. This, this might be an issue with some of you anchor folks. I would say uh, email anchor about this issue. I know I will be. Because it's frustrating. When you're on the train, you're on the train of thought, on the train of thought, on the train of thought, on the train. And then, just like we were talking about the other day, the cow comes walking through. The train stops. And then you're going, <clears throat> I don't know what that guy was talking about. Or I don't know where I left off. The main thing here is the idea of being rewarded for dreaming big. Take off the governor, take off the brakes, dream big. The idea is to visualize yourself. Many of us know this, visualize yourself in that moment. Visualize you're in that moment. Imagine the enjoyment, imagine that, imagine that enjoyment. Neville Goddard, he talks about dreaming of this stuff before you fall asleep even. Right before you fall asleep, just really imagine you're in there, you're in it. Let's say, let's say you dream of uh, living in a cabin in the woods. Well, as you go to sleep, imagine you're going to sleep in your cabin in the woods. And you imagine, you imagine that. And eventually, it shows up in your life. Now, this is the idea, is to dream without the expectation. It's like ordering a club sandwich at a restaurant or somewhere and you see all the ingredients you go oh okay I like this ingredient I like that ingredient I like this season I like that spice I like that herb I like those imagine if right after you ordered it 30 seconds later one minute later you're like ah yeah where's that food um well we'd be rushing the chef we'd be rushing that order and why would we do that why don't we let the chef create this in their own way Al allow the chef to put these little extra special little things in there that are really going to mystify us because then we get that club sandwich back we take a bite we go oh my god what is this this tastes like what I ordered and in addition to that there's more stuff added to it that just Ooh, so good. So the idea is dreaming huge. Dreaming huge. That's the bait on the hook. That's just the beginning of the dream. Dreaming huge. And then letting it go. Dreaming huge, letting it go. I think sometime of like a carrier pigeon or like a... You know, let it go. Okay, here's the letter. I'm sending this letter in the mail. Okay, off it goes. And then it'll make its way back to me in various camouflages. Just got to look out for it. So it's interesting, as I was talking about this, well, as I was interrupted by the by my notification, I clicked online, and there's this thing called Quanta Magazine. It just popped up on my, my thing here, Quanta Magazine. The article is, The Universal Pattern Popping Up in Math, Physics, and Biology. And these guys are referencing a video series called In Theory Vis Video Series hosted by David Kaplan. 
a theoretical particle physicist and co-creator of the award-winning documentary Particle Fever. Now, how beautiful is that, Usu, right there? That synchronicity. We're talking about the quantum mechanics. We're talking about things blipping in and out of existence. And then I go to <laughs> this website. Here it is. How beautiful is that? These are the things. When we get those high fives, the universe goes... Psh! Excellent. Excellent. You're trying to learn more about me? <laughs> Thank you. You're trying to have a deeper relationship with me, the universe? Thank you. Thank you for finally noticing what I have to offer you. <laughs> and the ways in which we can uh, cohabitate very pleasantly together. Whatever issue we have going on right now is just a tiny little blip in the timeline of, of, of our unfolding lives. Just a tiny little blip. Imagine, for instance, if you will, going out, up, you're floating up, you're floating up, you're floating up, you're floating up, you see the, you see the, uh, the city below, you see the people below, going up, going up, going up into the clouds, going higher and higher and higher, oh, you see the earth, and oh my gosh, it's getting smaller and smaller and smaller. Now those problems don't seem like too much, do they? You're floating way out there in the universe. Those, proud, those little issues don't seem like too much. These are things I have to continually remind myself of when I'm in the middle of trying to schedule the, the uh, Kapow Intergalactic Film Festival movies for it. And the times, the schedules, the when is this going to fit into here and how is that going to fit into there. All those little things. Where in those moments I'm going, oh my gosh, this is not my cup of tea. This is not... I'm an artist. I'm not a mathematical guy. And then it makes me grumpy. And then I start getting very irritated. And I start talking to people differently. It's not the person. It's my own inner struggle with what's going on right there. So all I have to do is go, okay, whoosh, step back a second, Kurt. Um, you'll figure it out. How? Well, I invite the universe into figuring it out for me. It knows I want to figure it out. I can go in a direction without, like, carrying an anger with me. I can go into a direction by carrying an openness of, let's see what comes my way. Let's see how this works together and unfolds and reveals itself to me. I can lead with excitement. So that's it, folks. I'm tired of hearing myself talk. There'll be more later, but I'm going to uh, have that interview with Martha. Take care, and may you be rewarded for dreaming huge. Whoa, 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 whoa. Um, wowzers, I just got some crazy news coming through um, concerning Yachtly Crew. This is crazy. Um, for a while, okay, so Yachtly Crew, obviously... It's a play on words of Motley Crue. We don't play any Motley Crue songs, at least not yet. It's all yacht rock, all all love songs. Um, folks say that we're the, the hardest rocking soft rock band they've ever seen. And we've played with the idea, you know, like we, we many of the members in the band are fans of Kiss. And not too long ago, we were paired up with band called Pris, which is an all-female KISS band. And so they opened up for us at the Viper Room and on Sunset Strip. And I thought, wow, that's amazing. We, you know, we, 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 folks have called us like, yeah, so the KISS of Yacht Rock. 
and we played with this idea, we played with this idea, and all of a sudden there was Pris. <clears throat> and then one of the guys in the band said, hey, wouldn't that be fun to, um, wouldn't that be awesome if we played the Kiss Cruise? Because Kiss has a cruise each year. And so that had kind of been in our brains, and I'm thinking, yep, 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 we'll, we'll be playing it, we'll be playing it. And we'll be playing it before we know it. So, okay, so that's, 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 you know, that, let's imagine that thing's kind of marinating our brains, we're thinking about this. Meanwhile, Toto plays at, uh, I don't know, some venue out here, probably a few, a few weeks ago, and two of our guys got, not front row, but r- right in the front, r- right near the front there, and they were wearing their Yachtly Crew t-shirts. And so during the show, they're like standing up and they're like singing along and, um, and we noticed that, uh, Lukather, what's his name? Lukather, one of the guys who's in the band, we met his son, Trev, Trevor Lukather at Red Foo's girlfriend's birthday party. Red Foo's the guy from LMFAO. I know it's, 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 it's crazy that these things are happening. So we met the son of one of the guys in in Toto, who sing Africa, Roseanne, all those great favorites. And so, uh, so it was cool. So, so that so our two guys, Yachtly Crew T-shirts. Think about this, but you know, a couple weeks ago or whatever, they're at the Toto show. One of the members of of Toto sees it. He mentions it on his Instagram. He's like, wow, that's so crazy. There's a band called Yachtly Crew. And then one of our guys commented, David Bowie commented saying, yeah, did you see us in the front row? He goes, yeah. So today, simultaneously, so, okay. So let's say a few a few days ago, um, one of our guys sent off a, what was it? I think they sent an email to see if, if the KISS crews would want to have us on their cruise or whatever. So today, simultaneously, two, we get two messages coming through that were just given to us. One of them was from... One of the messages is from... Where is he? Here we go. Adam Ritz. Now, Adam Ritz is with Yacht Rock Radio. He goes, Last Friday, I'm hanging backstage with Steve Lukather and Toto in Grand Rapids. Luke tells me about playing in L.A., and there were two guys in the audience in Yachtly Crew shirts. He said, What a great fucking name. I had to tell Tommy and those guys about it. So, you should know, Lukather was talking about you with not only me, but with Motley freaking crew. This blows my mind. Number one, the people from Toto know who we are. Number two, the dudes from Motley crew know who we are. This is just nuts. Then, this pops up. Philly Ocean gets this message. It says, hi Phil, wanted to let you know that we have, that we have put you on the list of possible artists for the 2019 Kiss Cruise. Oh my God. How crazy is that? The momentum is building, momentum is building. You know, this goes right along with the theme earlier on. And the last thing I was talking about, about dreaming big, dreaming big, dreaming big, dreaming big, dreaming big, being rewarded for it, dreaming big, dreaming big. So, uh, it just pays off to dream big, folks. Dream big. There is no harm in it. As long as you make resolutions with yourself to not get bent out of shape about that dream happening at a certain time, as long as you make make that pact with yourself, you're going to be just fine. Now, if you make the pact with yourself that... If this doesn't turn out exactly the way I envisioned it, I'm going to feel horrible. I'm going to be just terribly depressed and be mean to people. Well, then that's that'll also be the the uh, the outcome. 
So it really pays to dream big without, without that attachment. If that makes sense. Without that attachment. This analogy just popped into my mind. I know earlier I used the chef. Imagine, imagine, here's another one. You order your food. And then you go into the, the kitchen and you're standing right over the chef's shoulder, watching them closely, walk, watching them intently, criticizing them, analyzing their every movement. No, don't do that. Oop, don't do that. Yep. What is it? Oop, don't, don't do that. Oop, oop, oh, no. Oh, no. Are you sure you want the, the fire to go that high? Oh, no. Not enough seasoning. Don't stick next to it. Let it go. This goes along with that boom, boomerang analogy of Usu. Boomerang. Throw the boomerang out there. Boomerang. <laughs> you got any idea in your head? All right. Cool. I love it. You throw it out there comes back comes back bringing gifts wow wow this just blows my mind blows my mind so this 31st the 31st will be at borderline bar and grill thousand oaks i think it's 10 bucks to get in i'm not absolutely certain we're going to be at borderline bar and grill one of our favorite places to play the stage is big i can dance around back there without worrying about unplugging <laughs> Tommy's guitar or Paulie's uh, uh, cordless in-ear, wireless in-ear shenanigan. God, this is so great. This is so great. Folks, it really pays off. Very rewarding to dream big. Keep that in mind. I think I'm listening to Inspirato Projecto. Once again, you are listening to Man Behind the Machine. All right, folks. We're once again putting this on airplane mode. What you just heard there was Man Behind the Machine with his Inspirato Projecto promo. I just listened to Craig Spivak's podcast. He changes the name every once in a while. I think now it's called Craig... Craig Cast? I think before it was called Craig Pool. Um, you could search for his name under people on Anchor, Craig Spivak. He is a stand comedian out here <clears throat> in Los Angeles, in Los Los a Angles, I've had him on Inspirato Projecto Radio out there in Chinatown on a number of occasions. I've also interviewed him for this very podcast, and. And uh, the other night, if you, if you check back in the archives here, my sister Jenny and I went out to see him perform at, at the Ha Ha Cafe in North Hollywood, out there on the patio. That's where you can listen to it. We had, Jamie Kennedy happened to be there, and I recorded his entire set. <laughs> I also recorded Craig's. So, you can hear Craig. Which is awesome. So I was just listening to his podcast, and he, he, he'll frequently walk around Walmart. He does a terrific Morgan Freeman. A spot, I would say a spot-on. Imitation. And now it's time for my... Morgan uh, Freeman imitation. That's what um, 
that's what uh, he does a spot on spot on Morgan Freeman so he inspired me to take you along with me as I go up to as I go up to the grocery store and I get a few items of interest I'm out of coffee already you guys remember the last time I got coffee you were with me and I got coffee and I'm out already I usually put four scoops into my French press. Now, I think that's probably what it is. But if I don't, it's kind of it's kind of weak. So, you know, I've started to see around Los Angeles more and more and more is wings painted on walls. I'm noticing this more and more and more wings on the walls. And then, of course, people taking photos in front of the wings on the walls. I suppose that it's to go along with the with the uh, the uh, city of angels, city of angels motif. I rarely use the word motif, so you know when I say it, I mean it. I just realized there's this big building that's in my neighborhood. It's painted black on the outside. And I was just thinking a little bit ago that uh, it's a little, just a little bit, a little bit cold out, little, just a smidgen. But when I walk past this building, it emanates this heat. It's uh, a concrete building, I believe. Maybe that's what it has to do with it. Um, but it got me to thinking, wow, let's say if you're inside the house and your heater's broken, a good, a good, a good workaround, so to speak, is painting the outside of your house or apartment complex black. Paint it black. Oh, paint it black. When you paint it black... And then when you go outside, see, it might be cold inside, heater's broken, but you go outside and you'll be warm because you just stand next to the wall. Put your hands on the wall. Put your back on the wall. Put your face on it if you want. It's really, it's entirely up to you. It's not up to me. It's not up to me. It's totally up to you. And it's warm. I can can say that firsthand. I've experienced it. Oh. I've experienced it. I've witnessed it. So as I was walking past the wall right there, I put my hand on it, and sure enough, sure enough, warmth coming right off it like it's an actual heater, like the entire building is a heater. So I'm going up here, getting some new... uh, I'm getting some new coffee. A few other items of interest. I'm going to be... Meeting up with Brian DeVille, my fellow collaborator. We're setting up a screening of Bloody Bobby, the horror film I worked on. We're setting up a screening November 4th at a place called Sunspace, which is in a town called Shadow Hills, which is perfect, right? Sunspace and Shadow Hills. It's right on the corner of... It's... I guess it's right on the sort of the border of Sunland, the town of Sunland, and Shadow Hills, which is just so cool. How cool is that? If you stand in the middle, do your corneas burst into flames? Is it like standing in an eclipse? In an eclipse? It's like that, that joke has never been said before. However, I'm probably the first one to say it in this grocery store parking lot while I'm walking. I'm, I can guarantee that. The first one named Kurt walking in this very grocery grocery store parking lot at this particular point in time, on this day, in this year of our Lord, our collective Lord, Lord of Lord, hosts of hosts. So we're going to hold a screening for Bloody Bobby out there. I'm going to see him tomorrow. We're going to brainstorm a little bit on it. We're also... We're also playing with the idea of... Making um, a film festival 
called Absurda Familia, the Absurda Familia Film Festival. Say that ten times fast. It would be the Absurda Fam- Familia Film Festival, A F F F, A triple F, or maybe even A F squared, uh, A, no, not squared, um, A F to the third power, that's what it would be. The Absurda Familia Film Festival. Goodness, I can't seem to find any, any, um, any baskets to put my, my stuff in. They're around here somewhere. I know it. I just know it. I can feel it in my bones. It's going to magnetize me to it. I just know it. Oh, pardon me. I can feel it in my bones. I just know. It's a special art form to weave your way through a grocery store. Every single time I'm in a grocery store, it's an art form. Weaving, weaving my way around in there. Weaving my way around. Trying to find the right... It's like you've got to be a snake. You've got to be like water when you're in the grocery store. So otherwise you can easily lose your mind. You can easily get... Uh, it's sort of a form of road rage, I guess. It's more grocery store rage than anything. Uh... All right, you know what we're going to do? We're going to carry this stuff with with one hand. We're going to do one hand, because i got the other hand on the podcast. We're going to do one, one-handed, we're going to do one-handed grocery shopping today, right now. So we're going to put together the Absurda Familia Film Fest. You're more than welcome to enter. It's going to be all, mm, I don't think any feature films. I mean, I'd like to accept feature films. However, if we do it over a weekend, we're still working out the details, but if we do it over a weekend, then, if we could do it over a weekend, then there's a, it's just much less stress. We don't have to do a whole week. We don't have to do a whole week. We just do, do, do the weekend, three days. Potato, potato, yada, yada, yada. Red gamut. Red gamut, sweet potatoes. Sweet potatoes, sweet potatoes. Red gamut, sweet potatoes. Get them now, get them here. Get them while they're hot. Get them while they're cold. Get them while they're new. Get them while they're old. Get them while they're here. Get them while they're there. Very good. Let's see what that comes out to. Pound. Good. Good, good, good. Pound it up. So the other night, uh, I met with the owner. We met the owner. You actually got a chance to hear him talk about the Haha ha Cafe, how it came about, all that resmataz. What's immediately popping into my brain is the idea of the possibility of doing podcasts there uh, on a certain day each each week. Maybe I could be there on, you know, I don't know, open mic days or something like that. I could be there on open mic days, interview folks, talk to him, talk to them. Can we do it, folks? Can we do it? I'm going to look for baskets again. I'm going to I'm gonna zoom around, zip around. I'm going to look for a bat. Shit, maybe I should just get a... Should I just go... No, no, no. I'm not going to get a groceries cart. I'm going to get a basket. Good old-fashioned basket is what I'm going to get. You're going to get an old, old-fashioned basket. Not a new-fashioned basket. The old-fashioned basket. The old-fashioned basket. I think in the, in the uh, medieval grocery stores, they had the old-fashioned baskets. They had... Oh, hold on a second. Excuse me, sir. Can I grab one of these little uh, baskets here? Real quick? Is that okay if I slip through here? All right. There they are. They're all the baskets. They're all piled up right there. Thank you. Um... So, look at that. We found a basket. Dig it, 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 dig it. 
So as I was saying, maybe the basket's back in the olden times. An old-fashioned basket, I imagine it was wrought iron. Can you imagine carrying on a wrought iron, probably 60-pound basket like this, getting groceries off the shelves? Getting all your all your prepackaged groceries off the shelves? Can you imagine that? Oh, pardon me. Could you imagine that? It's, uh, it can be quite, quite a conundrum on some occasions, for sure. Quite, quite a conundrum. All right, so we got a few, a couple. We're on to number three, number three of the items that we're getting today. One of them is the red potatoes. You're with me for that. Next one. Peanut butter, bread, what else, what else, what else, what else, peanut butter, bread, peanut butter, bread, these guys are making them, are they making, are they making these cans smaller, are these dudes making the cans smaller, are they sneaking it? So yeah, I'll be, I'll be brainstorming with Brian. Oh no, actually, no, no, no. On the way there, we gotta find that coffee aisle. Here we go. Here's the coffee aisle. Here we are again. Once again, in the coffee aisle. Finding ourselves face to face with, oh, so many selecciones. With, oh, so many. Oh, so many selecciones. Selecciones. Mm-hmm. All right. Okay. Okay. Let's put the let's put the let's put the the mathematics to the test here. Okay. Shall we? Shall we? Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. Grand. What is this? Grand. Let's figure this out here. Let's figure this out. Cavalia, the, co the coffee, bean, tea, leaf. Okay, I understand. I think I'm starting to figure it out. House balloon, that's what we're looking for. That's what we're looking for. That's what we're looking for. Sugar, sugar, all oh, honey, honey. You are my candy girl. It's funny, I was just reading online about something, and it makes so much sense, called sidewalk rage. It happens to me. Why? Why do I get filled with rage on the sidewalk? It's that, I think what it is... The rage, the rage comes from having to sit idle. Like when you want to go, 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 moving, 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 and then you got folks who are either walking into your lane when you're walking on the sidewalk, and everyone, and folks are just walking continually into into your uh, into your path. You start to go, man. Are you even aware of what's going on? The sidewalk rage they talked about also uh, centers on the idea of slow walkers, too. You know, the tourists, they stop, they take their photos, and uh, just that idea of, just that idea of the resistance holding you back from going, just that easy flowing, easy going. We're going to pick this conversation back up after we exit the grocery store as I need to take care of this business. Taking care of business. Talk to you later. All right, folks, this concludes another episode of Inspirato Projecto. Thank you for listening. Uh, stay inspired. And just in general... Continue to 
entice your inner genius to make his or her way from your inner core to your outer from the from the epicenter to the aftershocks if that makes sense by the way as a side note it's always intriguing to me how one minute it, it looks like it's about to get dark and then all of a sudden the next minute it actually is dark it, it's crazy how you can have one foot in one side and then the uh, other foot on the other side so you got the one foot in the daylight side and then all of a sudden then it's now on the dark side when I walked to the grocery store it was light outside wearing my sunglasses when I exited it's kind of twilight is twilight the same thing du wait dusk dusk is the morning right or dawn dawn is the morning dusk is at night where does twilight fit in keep that in mind <laughs>